first flipped video for World History 1. Please right now title your Cornell notes. These are the ones that are going to stay in your notebook with the exact title that you see here. Flipped video 1.1, How do Geographers Use and Interpret Maps? Please have an extra sheet of paper ready because you're going to do the analysis questions at the end of this flipped video and you are going to title them the exact same way. You'll have flipped video 1.1, How do Geographers Use and Interpret Maps? Since that's what you're handing in to me. Let's talk about what you're actually taking for your Cornell notes. We're going to review this in class just so you're familiar. But just so you see where we are, you've got your name, period, today's date, there's the flipped video. This could be the exact same thing for your Cornell notes and for your analysis questions. So let's get started. Okay? You do not need to take notes on this slide. The reason why we talk about maps in this course to begin with is because we not only learn about people and places, but we learn about the geography, which, is, which extends beyond the physical land. And maps are the real tools of geographers, and they help us better understand uh, the places that it, we are studying across Earth's surface. So let's begin with our notes here. These are very basics. We're going to start with the very basics. We're going to build our way up to the more challenging concepts here. Just to start us off, that word cardinal direction should be on the left-hand side of the notes, just as you see here. Right? You notice that I use the pink line as my left-hand side for my Cornell notes with the definition on the right. Cardinal directions is a reference to the, simply the basic directions of north, south, east, and west. What you'll see at the bottom right there is known as a compass rose. The compass rose is found on all maps to help you get oriented on the map. So you will notice um, right from the get-go on the first map quiz, you'll see exactly where your cardinal directions are found in your compass rose. Very straightforward so far. We've got cardinal directions on our left north, south, east, and west on our right. I will not always be structuring the Cornell notes like this, but for our first round, this can help guide you in your note taking. So right now we got lines of measurement on the left. The way that maps are divided to more effectively uh, be utilized as tools is using lines called la lines of latitude and lines of longitude. Okay. An easy way to remember the difference between the two, longitude, think how long you are, meaning how tall you are. Lines of longitude run north to south. Lines of latitude run uh, east to west. A v significantly less politically correct way to remember that, but perhaps could jog your memory, is that lat you can remember latitude, fatitude, goes straight across, left to right. Whereas longitude runs north to south, up and down, just as you see with the equator and the prime meridian right here below. Now let's talk about some specific and important lines of longitude and latitude. One that I'm, I am in quite confident you were all familiar with would be the equator. The equator on the left-hand side of your notes right now, zero degrees latitude on the right. The, uh, the equator divides the Earth into the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere, which is uh, the line that you see here. Now the northern hemisphere and some, southern hemisphere, that word hemisphere, you can consider in this context to mean half. Sometimes when we talk about things, particularly in a geography course, we'll talk about patterns and we'll use, we'll help differentiate between patterns of the northern hemisphere versus patterns of the southern hemisphere. Very similarly, the prime meridian, we got prime meridian on the left, zero degrees longitude on the right. Oh, and just one quick note. You'll notice that I just wrote the words northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. On my notes, I would have written down equator on the left, zero degrees latitude on the right, and then I would have written next to zero degrees latitude, divides earth into northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. So you'll notice that the notes I'm taking down are a combination of what I'm saying and what you see on the slides here. That's how you should approach your Cornell notes during flip videos. The prime meridian divides the Earth into the Western Hemisphere and the Eastern Hemisphere. The prime meridian uh, runs through zero degrees longitude. It also runs directly through a town called Greenwich in England. So it's not some, sometimes you will hear references to Greenwich Mean Time or Greenwich Time, and that's a reference to the time at zero degrees longitude, which is the prime meridian. We're going to come back to the idea of time momentarily. A little quick side note too, for the flip videos, one of the beautiful things, if I'm moving a little too quickly for you here, just simply pause me and then continue as soon as you're ready. A little bit more about degrees of latitude and longitude. Latitude is also known as lines, that are, they're also called parallels. You can put those both on the left-hand side of your notes. Lines of latitude run east to west, right? So I'm going to exit out here for a minute. They run east to west, right? But what they're actually used to measure is how far north or how far south a given point is on Earth's surface. Let's look at a bigger example just so we can see this here. If here's the, prime, excuse me, here's the equator, line of the zero degrees latitude. If I'm trying to figure out where this point is on Earth, let's just go right here to Portugal, then I'm first trying to use lines of latitude to understand how far north that point is from the equator. So though the lines run east to south, 
they actually measure how far north or how far south a given point is on Earth's surface. Very similarly, lines of longitude, also known as meridians, they run north to south. Now let me see, we get this, the, here's our prime meridian right here at zero degrees longitude. But they actually measure how far east or how far west a given point is on Earth's surface. Lines of longitude, north to south, but measure east to west. Those are, that's the purpose. Those two points combine. If you find the latitude and longitude of a given place, that's called its absolute location. That's called figuring out exactly where it is on Earth's surface. That's what your GPS uses if it's trying to figure out where you are. The absolute location, longitude and latitude. Two other important um, lines of longitude that are helpful to know. One of which is called the Tropic of Cancer. The other is called the Tropic of Capricorn. Tropic of Cancer being at 23.5 degrees north longitude and the Tropic of Capricorn being 23.5 degrees south. I'm going to read you the formal definition and then I'm going to give you something much more simple to remember. The Tropic of Cancer is the circle of latitude or the line of latitude on the Earth that marks the most northerly point at which the sun may appear directly overhead at the June solstice. The Tropic of Capricorn is the same, so, uh, same concept, circle of latitude on Earth that marks the southerly latitude at which the sun can be directly overhead at the December solstice. In other words, this is called the equatorial zone, the Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn. These are the areas on Earth's surface where the sun most directly hits the Earth at all times throughout the year. Yeah, and the solstices help us understand the rotate the um, orbit of the Earth around the sun, in essence, right? and the, the angle at which the Earth is receiving the sunlight. This equatorial zone, the reason why I want to draw your attention to it, is because there's lots of misconceptions about where places are always hot and where places are always cold. Moreover, there are also misconceptions about where the seasons come from. These lines of longitude help us just make general demarcations, general lines of, uh, as I mentioned, the equatorial zone. And let me show you why we use this, okay? There's an extremely common misconception that people will say that the Earth, the seasons happen because the Earth is closer or farther away from the sun. That's completely inaccurate. Okay? So for example, look up here, we can see, look at up, up here, look at this screen here. That would have the idea that if we got close to the sun, it's summer, far away from the sun, it's winter. That's completely inaccurate. We are always orbiting the sun, right? always, always. There's Earth, and you see the Earth's axis here. Earth is rotating on its axis. And when Earth is rotating on its axis, that's what gives us the seasons because the sunlight at certain times of the year is more directly hitting the, the one part of the Earth, and the southern hemisphere or northern hemisphere, as opposed to other times. And let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this flipped video, or excuse me, this YouTube video to help you understand this concept of the seasons. The Earth travels around the sun. It takes one year, one year, for the Earth to go all the way around the sun once, one time. And because the Earth is tilted, sort of like a spinning top, parts of the Earth get more heat and light from the sun at different times of the year. As he gets to this next part, Please take note of where the sunlight is being illuminated on the Earth as the Earth rotates on its axis, right here, this axis, and as it orbits the sun. You will see that different areas of the Earth receive more direct sunlight at different times throughout the year. You see, spring and summer, fall and winter. So you see there, the Earth travels Whoops. around the sun. It takes one year, oh geez, hold on, I'm one year for the Earth. Okay, so the concept here again is the lines of longitude and latitude help us, they, these two relevant, um, Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn, are relevant because they help us better understand uh, locations of the, where the sun's Earth is most directly hitting us. And we just kind of threw in there too the ideas about the seasons. Two very basic things that we, you guys are more than familiar with. The North Pole and the South Pole. North Pole, on the left-hand side of your notes, 90 degrees north, lat 90 degrees north latitude. It's the northernmost point on the Earth. So, sadly, I hope I'm not breaking any hearts here. This is not actually where Santa Claus lives because it is actually in the middle of the Arctic Ocean, as you see on the top right uh, on that map. So the North Pole is just simply a point on, on a map as opposed to a physical place. Uh, the South Pole, however, South Pole is at 90 degrees south. It's, it's the southernmost point on Earth, which is in Antarctica. And you'll notice, please also check your spelling of Antarctica, very commonly misspelled. You'll notice that it actually does hit right up on Antarctica. Do note, I want you to note right now, because we're about to get into this idea, 
that look at the size of Antarctica on the right-hand map versus what appears to be the size of Antarctica on the left-hand map. Antarctica looks enormous on the map on the left, whereas it's rather small on the map on the right. That's a result of what's called a projection, right? It is absolutely impossible. Let me skip ahead here. It is absolutely impossible. We'll come back to these. To, oh, geez. Okay, here we go. To represent Earth, this three-dimensional Earth. Earth is 3D, right? It's not, too, it's not flat. This three-dimensional Earth on a two-dimensional surface of a map, which means that you are always going to have distortion. You are always going to have things that are inaccurate on a map. Uh, you cannot possibly perfectly represent that three-dimensional surface. So imagine right now that this map, if this was a 3D Earth, that they're trying to stretch that paper, stretch that map around the Earth. What that means is that the top and the bottom on this particular map projection become extremely distorted. Right now, Antarctica looks enormous. But remember, on this back here, it's not enormous at all. Ooh, too many, too many. Antarctica is actually very small relative to many of the other con not other con many of the other continents it's a very very small it's a small landmass that's called distortion and that happens because it's absolutely impossible to represent earth perfectly on a two-dimensional surface i mentioned this already about time zones lines of longitude are also de help us mark the difference of time zones and time zones are actually each time zone is separated by 15 degrees of longitude right that's because we have a 3d earth right it's a sphere we have a spherical earth which makes it the one rotation of that Earth 360 degrees. If you divide 360 by those 15 degrees of longitude, that's 24 hours in a day, right? That's each one of those hours represents a 15 degree rotation of the Earth. Makes this makes sense when we look at it this way. Here's that Earth spinning on its axis, right? Every 15 degrees longitude that the Earth spins represents another hour. That's why we have the time zones. Time zones are representative or, or help us um, indicate, I guess you'd say, the Earth's axis and the, the turning of the Earth on its axis. If you see here, this is just a way to describe that. There's three terms of like, you know, we already have time zones down. But here we are at the, at, it's, this is called Greenwich Mean Time. I mentioned this already, that the prime meridian runs straight through Greenwich, England. This, uh, often you hear the phrase Greenwich Mean Time. I just heard it this morning on the radio. That's the that's the time at zero degrees longitude. Okay? If you go, if you are traveling to the east around the Earth, you're following the Earth's axis. Then you're going earlier in time, right? If you're traveling west, you're going later in time. So this is zero degrees longitude. Zero degrees longitude at the prime meridian. One hour earlier, earlier, earlier. You'd be going one hour later, 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 later. Right? The time at the absolute opposite side of the Earth, so the Earth is a circle, right? The Earth is a sphere, so this means that this right here, this is Russia, as in this Russia, right? This connects. So on the directly opposite side, I want you to use your geometry skills here and take this flat map in your head and make it into a circle. Right? On the directly, on the exact opposite side of the Earth, which is right here, because we put it together, that's called the international date line, right? That's the, it's at 180 degrees longitude, and that's the difference between one day and the next, right? That's going to be, um, those are two important lines of longitude that are helpful for us understanding, um, as I mentioned, the rotation of the Earth. Uh, let's see what else we got here. We already went over projections. Okay, what I need you to do now, I need you now to, uh, I'm going to come back to these, to take out your blank map that you were given in class. Take a minute. This is extremely basic for most of you here. I'm not don't, certainly don't mean to insult anyone's intelligence, but we got to make sure we're starting on the same playing field. Um, please go ahead and label your continents. Right? Double checking, as I already mentioned, the spelling of Antarctica. You also notice that Australia and Oceania. Oceania is a, um, the is the term used to describe the many many islands of the Pacific Ocean because the Earth is round. So this Pacific Ocean is of course the same as this Pacific Ocean. So these islands right here are often re are referred to as Oceania. We also have, now, as soon as you're done with your continents, please move forward to labeling your oceans. Okay? We've got the Pacific Ocean over here. Got this, this is referred to as the South Pacific Ocean. This, this whole area down here is often just simply referred to as the Southern Ocean, rather than the North Atlantic, South Atlantic, North Pacific, South Pacific, North Pacific, South Pacific. Typically, this is labeled as the Atlantic Ocean, this is labeled as the Pacific, and this is labeled as the Pacific, and this is labeled as the Southern Ocean. Note your spelling of Arctic.
Arctic Ocean, also commonly misspelled. Also a common mistake is to put Antarctica and the Arctic Ocean together. Total opposite sides of the globe. Antarctica down here, Arctic Ocean up here. The Indian Ocean, of course, is easy to remember because the India is pointing directly into the Indian Ocean. Okay, that's it for now. Here are your um, analysis questions. What I would like you to do, you have a separate sheet of paper. You have it titled Flip Video 1.1 with the, the essential question there. You have your questions labeled 1, 2, and 3. I'd like you to answer these questions in your own words. The second one requires that you go to a website. I have also posted this website on our World History 1 page, so you don't necessarily need to worry about retyping it in. Um, and I said here, identify the absolute location. That means the exact latitude and longitude, right? Um, and the last one, number three. What I need you to do for number three. Number three involves a YouTube video. I tried to post this already, but it did not work. They took me down for copyright issues, apparently. The YouTube video is also posted on InGrade Pro. Come back here. And it's a YouTube video. It's labeled as uh, Maps Lie. I need you to watch that YouTube video. It's from BuzzFeed. And then you'll answer this question, explain why people claim that maps lie. So number one, you don't need anything. But number two and number three, there are two links on InGrade Pro that you're going to um, utilize so that you can answer those last questions. All right, please come prepared for your um, first map quiz on continents, oceans, and the key lines of longitude and latitude. Thanks so much.